Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and for some of those regular viewers you might recognize the bike on the hoist. Yes, I'm back on the Honda CB750 K2 and well I've sort of taken it to pieces again. I have and the reason for that is to be very stop start this project. It's been going on for a whole year now. The vast majority of it has been uh, delays have been down to waiting for parts. Now, in this package here, and uh, I showed this on a live stream a fair few weeks ago, to be honest, we got a new top, what I call a triple clamp, uh, because the old one developed a problem which is common to this particular bike. And, this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this video, because I think it's very important that people are aware of this. I'm sure many of you already are. Uh, we've got some pretty serious CB750 fans that watch these, these videos, this series where me doing all the work on this particular bike. And it was one of those uh, gentlemen that basically brought it to my attention. So thank you very much. Um, let's go over to the bike and I'll show you what I mean. Let's roll the intro. Used. Bit of freestyle photography, here you go, look. So, remember right, it was on this side. Yes, here we go, look. So, the triple clamp here, it cracks. It's a known fault with these bikes. Honda are obviously aware of it. And very, very strangely, they put a washer. This is standard from the factory. They put a little washer between the, the joint to prevent it from basically over compressing. Uh, but I still, it clearly isn't enough because uh, the aluminium has fatigued and there's a quite a big crack all the way through here, which obviously will be a warrant fail, an inspection fail. You know, it's pretty important these bits don't break. It's all part of your steering and suspension. If it was to fail, God, you, it begs belief what could actually happen on the road. So we had to order a completely new top triple clamp. Honda call it something else. I call it a triple clamp. Uh, very, very hard to find. They're, they're extremely expensive as well. There are aftermarket ones available which may not have this inherent fault. They, maybe they've, they've increased the thickness of the actual casting. I don't know. Maybe a slightly different material. But uh, I went for the genuine Honda, which I've been told has been modified. So it shouldn't have the same problem again. Mm. So this particular video is going to be all about replacing that. Now, as you can see, I've already pulled off basically the entire front end. There should be a front wheel just there and some forks and brakes and all that kind of stuff. And it's all been taken off. So the reason why I didn't film the strip down of the front end is because most of that has already been included in previous videos. Taking the front wheel out, taking the mud guard off, doing the front brake, all that kind of stuff. Fitting handlebars. It's already embedded in the previous episodes of this particular project. So what's this video all about? Well, this video is about replacing this triple clamp. This is the new one, obviously nice and shiny. It feels great. Can I tell any difference? No, not really at the moment, but let's go and pull the old one off the bike. There's not much more to do. We'll get them both on the bench, look at them side by side. We've got to swap the clocks across some bits and pieces, and then we can get them put back on the bike. Whatever else is going to be in this video, I don't know how far we're going to get. Uh, I've been really, really struggling to get torque settings out of the Honda manual. They just don't seem to be in there. Um, I don't know the torque setting for this bolt. You know, the one that clamps the fork stanchion. There's one either side, obviously. I don't know the torque setting for 
the bolt that goes through here. I just cannot find it anywhere in the service manual. I have managed to find the torque setting for the large nut, which I'll give you it now because it's it's like a unicorn. Is these are these torque settings? It's uh, for, I believe it is, and don't quote me on this. Uh, between 78 and 117 newton meters. I'm getting that off forums. I can't get it out of the manual. It's not there. There should be some torque specification sheets in the manual and it, they just don't exist. They're doing modern manuals but they're just not in that manual. The manual does keep referring back to ensure you tighten the bolt to the torque specification but it doesn't give me the torque specification anywhere. I've searched it from cover to cover. It's just not there. Come on Honda. We need them. Could be another reason why people have been over tightening these and causing you know causing problems. If we knew the torque setting there's a you know, more chance of it not getting broken. So when it comes to tighten these up, I'm just going to gingerly nip them up for now. And hopefully, once this video goes out, somebody out there can give me the torque settings that I need so I can come back in the workshop and just torque them up. That's the plan. Because I don't want to over tighten them and cause damage. I don't want to under tighten them and have the potential of them coming loose and causing an accident honest okay right let's head over to the bike and let's get that uh, that old triple clamp removed and we'll do a comparison between the old and the new here we go so as you can see i've already removed the handlebars the handlebar clamp the throttle cables had to be undone as well as the brake line as the, uh, the rev counter cable as the speedo cable as the clutch cable there's heaps of stuff that had to come off to get to this point this bolt is already loose. Also remember the clutch cable goes through the middle, as does most of the stuff to be fair. All the wiring was never actually plugged in. So we've now got this off. Let's head over to the bench and take a look. So all that needs to be removed now are the clocks. And by the looks of it, it's just gonna be that screw there, hopefully. Because we're gonna take the whole assembly off and then, we, then we'll do a comparison between the old triple clamp and the new one. I didn't want to take these off on the bike just in case you know, I dropped one of, the, one of the clocks on the floor. At least if it drops off on the bench, it won't be a problem. Right. Not taken one of these apart before. This is a first for the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Oh, two separate pieces, that's why it's putting that across. Let's get Mr. Screw out of the way. Jeez. There we go. Right, so now these should just, oh, you can swap sides. That would confuse the hell out of Alan, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would be a cracking joke. Right, so that's both of those out of the way. Uh, bearing in mind, uh, I'll check the photo, I think there's a speedo on the left. Um, right, so we've also got some screws in here that hold these bits on, which were actually loose. We'll get those out of the way. I reckon, I reckon some thread lock on these when we put them back in. Right, stick it over there. Let's have that one out. Oh, that one's a bit tighter. Definitely have thread lock on. You can feel it's a bit tight on the threads. There we go. Right, I'll stick those on the bench. There's not much bench left, to be fair. There's a lot of parts everywhere. Okay, we need these bolts out. And not to lose those washers, those little spaces. They're critical. And you can still buy those actually. I found those online. I hope, well, I'm assuming that they're, they're, they're the right ones. Oh, somebody made them up. Somebody's made those up because they've got this, these have got two flats on them rather than one. The ones online are the single flat. Hmm. Because they might not be the right thickness. And that again could be the reason why the, the actual clamp is broken. See if this one's been made as well. If this has got two flats on it. Ah, oh, it has, but in different places. Hmm, seems a little bit odd. The thing with these old bikes is people tend to make a lot of stuff up themselves when things get lost. And sometimes they don't realize the importance of the specification of that particular component. And it can cause further problems. But we can't order any more parts. 
we absolutely can't. Part supply here in New Zealand is atrocious. It's reached all time lows. Okay, we've got the new one, we've got the old one. Let's take a look. Right, said Fred, one new one. I'll try to do it that way around so you can see what's going on. Hopefully we're on camera, I think we are. So, any distinct changes? Or does it look the same? Well, there are some variations, aren't there? Seems a bit thicker around here to what it is there. Any more meat? Yeah, I think there's a bit more meat. Possibly in thickness. We could measure it, I suppose, but we don't need to. Um, this top piece here looks slightly different on the casting as well. That's a lot wider, a lot larger diameter on the outside, the OD to that one. This area here is a bit thinner. Hmm. All the threads are there. And they did say it would be it would be modified. It's not a you know, it's not a it's not the same part. They have actually reviewed it somehow in some way. Yeah, that's a bit weird. It's a bit of a bit of the casting is missing there, look. Very strange. Right, well, before we go any further, I want to take a really close look at this damaged part, the cracked part here on the old clamp. This clamp is scrap, so it doesn't matter if it breaks off, but I want to take a little look and see just how bad that had got. So maybe we'll stick it in the vise, and we'll just apply a little bit of force onto that and see how easily, I see if it's going to just going to fall off. Mm. Very interested to see how bad that is. Like I said before, I didn't spot this, and I'd already given the bike a good check over. Uh, one of the viewers spotted it, which was really, actually, quite a few of the viewers picked up on it, actually. And there's a crack. You can see where the paint's already missing. There's a crack that runs down here. So, I'm going to put a screwdriver in here, and we're just going to give it a little bit of a flex and see what happens. But first, I'll give it a bit of a wire brush. See if we can clean that joint off a bit and get rid of some of the paint. So we get a really good look at what's actually going on. There you go, you can see that crack really clearly now. It goes all the way across. It's the widest down here and it's cracked all the way up there. It's just hanging in there. Right, screwdriver. Oh, Alan's going to kill me for this, but I just want to highlight just how brittle or how ready for failure this piece really is. So, oh, look at that. I'm hardly putting any force on the screwdriver. So I'm now closing the joint up. Look at that. You see the cracks open right up. And we'll just bring it back a little bit. As you know, aluminium doesn't like to, to flex too many times. Look at that. It really is, it's not providing any clamping force whatsoever anymore. Um, you know, it may as well just not be there. So just very gently, I mean, it really is just going to break off. There's just, there's no strength left in it at all. Oh no, it's coming. It is. Are you ready? Oh man. Right, if we take a look at the joint, we might be able to see some corrosion and see how long ago this started to fail. How's that for photography? So, looking at the camera, because it's, it's actually enlarged on the camera to down here. My eyesight's terrible these days. But uh, if we've got a meteorologist a metal specialist viewing you may be able to comment for us but um, by the looks of it to me we've got already had obviously there's been some movement in the joint for some time and it looks like we've got sort of some buffing around this area here where it's a lot smoother and around this area here as well but you know I could be talking complete rubbish but that's basically what it looks like along the fracture line and if I can squeeze into the shot the other half, 
so yes yeah, so there you go look so you've got both halves you can see the damage or the fracture line that's occurred so you've got all the information that you need i mean it is well known that these do fail they shouldn't and i really haven't come across the same problem on any other bike it's obviously a design flaw on the hondas or maybe not so much a design flaw but it could just be that the material they chose to use was flawed or inferior really for the job in hand not good at all right we need to undo some more work okay so fun's over next job is to install the clocks and bits and pieces and the bolts onto the new triple clamp and then we can make a start putting it back on the bike well a relatively easy task you may say and i'm sure it is so we've got these to pop back on there again I did promise that we'd use some thread lock because, you know, old bikes, vibration and all that. And if all goes to plan, I won't need to take these off again. That's, oh geez, hopefully. There's no reason why I should. We are getting close to the end of this project. And uh, now that we're in lockdown 3.0 here in New Zealand... It means I can get on with some of these jobs. Now, is it going to go in? Actually, there's a lot of paint in there. I'm going to run a tap through those just to clean out the paint before we chew the whole thing up. So, what thread are they? I think they're an M6. Best check. I'm back. Right, I have got an M6 nut, which actually is too big. It's not an M6, so is it an M5? I think it is. It is. Right. So I'm going to find my N5 blind tap and we'll whiz it down. Well, bugger. My M5 tap has gone AWOL. No idea where it is. It's not in the box where I keep all my little tap bits. I do need to clean those threads out. So I'm just going to use an M5 bolt. This happens to be a stainless one. And I'll get a slit disc and I'll just put a couple of uh, relief grooves down you know a couple of the flanks you know 180 degrees to each other and uh, that will allow the paint to go into that relief as i wind it in just in exactly the same way that a tap works and hopefully that's going to clean out that paint back in a second There you go pretty simple and i'm pretty sure it'll do the trick i've done this kind of trick before if you haven't got it's no good for tapping the actual threads but it sort of works for cleaning clearing them out if you haven't got the right size tap but you do have the right size bolt with the right thread on it what you think is gonna be a nice simple job for a, an afternoon turns out to be a little bit more involved right Let's give that a go. I might put it in the vise. We'll see how we get on. Oh, there we go. Look. Worked like a charm, didn't it? Pretty good. So we'll go as far down as we can, clear all that paint out, or plastic coating, whatever they've used. I think it's paint. Pretty sure it's paint. I can see overspray. Yep. Yeah. Right, we're down to the bottom, we're coming back out again. If you look carefully in the grooves that I've cut in the bolt, you'll see all the bits of paint. Hey, don't do that. Right. Oh, 
There you go, look. See? Paint. <sighs> Good job. Nice and clean in there now, look. The threads. Come on, camera. Focus. There you go, look. Pretty cool. Right. Only two more to go. So what I need to do now is just clear out that groove. Get rid of all the paint. Debris. And then we can go again. It's not the easiest thing to start because you don't want to cross thread it because of all the paint. But I think we're going to be all right. Yes, there we go. Look. You can't rush this kind of stuff, can you? But this, this technique has got me out of trouble in the past, and I think it's prudent to do this and clear out the paint now and try and force the screws in and then risk damaging one of the threads because this was a very expensive piece. I think it was about 650 New Zealand dollars. It's a lot of money for an old bike, and Alan spent a fair bit on this machine. Right, so this is actually quite a long bolt, so the one that goes into here, not the one that I'm using at the moment. So it's important we go all the way down. Right, we've got one more. If you don't want to watch the next one, Now's a good time to go and get yourself a beer out of the fridge. And you can have one for me as well. Talking of beer, I keep getting phone calls from my mates because we're in lockdown in New Zealand at the moment saying that they're off to the pub and they can't go to the pub. So the next best thing is they stock their own fridge with, um, concentrate and deconcentrate, with beersies and they spend their whole afternoon just drinking them. Which is great. Wish I could join in. Now, there's a lot of paint in this one. You need to start, matey. We did well with the last two. I know two out of three ain't bad, isn't that the the the, uh, the lyrics? Bit of meat loaf. Peep peep. I think, oh yes, I think we're there now. Man, there's a lot of paint in this one. We'll just use it like we would a tap because we don't want to, we're only a couple, of th a couple of turns in at the moment, we don't want to strip it out. I might even put a bit of lube on this one, hang on a second. Just seems a bit tight. Let's try that, a bit of cutting compound. Jeez, don't move around like that. There we go. Just a bit of lubricant. You can't go wrong, can you, a bit of lube? Phew! I know when Alan's watching this, he'll be, he'll be going into a cold sweat watching me do all this kind of stuff. Sorry, Alan. A few more grey hairs, mate. For both of us. Right, we are there. Fantastic, look. A nice clean thread down there. Is it gonna focus for you? I think it is, isn't it? There we are. Pretty good, okay. So, we've got lubricant down that one, so we need to clean that out with some brake cleaner before we can use the thread lock. The other two will be fine, so let me go and find some brake cleaner. Okay, mind your eyes. Mind the camera, Andy. Oh yeah, that'll do. We didn't use a lot, did we? We'll just give all three a blast out with the airline. Get all the bits out. 
Right, well, we're back to where we started, like, I don't know, 20 minutes ago. Where's my thread lock? Okay, bit of thread lock on the bolt. There we go. Stick him over there. Right. We'll try again. Oh, so much easier. You see, a little bit of preparation time makes all the difference. You're not fighting things then. Fancy not be able to find me tap though. Got it. I wonder if it got broken. I'll have to get another one. Jared, if you're watching this, order me a set of M5 taps, please. Top blow. Right, so that's that one. And then we've got this other one to do. Hope you like, hope you like the uh, the close-up camera work. In fact, that's full of crap. Where's my wire brush gone? I'll get my little one. Yeah. Oh, a brand new one. Look at this. Little brass wire brush. You can't go wrong. Clear the threads out a bit. My fingers. We. I don't, they don't really. This is about the smallest size bolt they can cope with. To be honest. After that, we we struggle a bit. Oh, somebody's made these. Look, they're being cut down. And they haven't even dressed them nicely either. There's a great chunk of thread sticking out. Oh, really? Come on, people. You can do better than that. Shall I tidy that up? I'm going to tidy it up. You hate me, I know. You want to get the job done. Back in a minute. Honestly, who cuts bolts and doesn't dress them at the end? Oh, come on. You can do it. Stop moving around. These are aluminium jaws, by the way. That's why they're a bit soft. It won't cause any harm to the head, which is good. That's better. Right, we'll just give it a quick clean up around the around the edges. Almost there. See how long did that take? Bugger all. Here we go. I get told, Andy, your videos are way too long. Well, I know that. Ah, just got some thread lock on my phone. Wonderful. Right, pop them in there. You can always fast forward. Fast forward's great. But it's a journey, and some people like to go on this journey. Oh yes, look at that. Bloody good. Right, let's give him a bit of a tweak. Funny design. Don't get this on your new bikes, do you? But I suppose it works. And, you know, motorcycle development was a learning process over many, many, many years, over a century now. So they tried different things. Jeez. I think that'll do us. Cool. Right, we can fit the clocks now. Woohoo! Right, pretty sure, for memory, it was speedo on the left, rev counter on the right. That's how they normally are. So. Oh, you could get it in all. We could. <laughs> I'm just going to put them in flat like that, I think. You could do the speed style like that, you see, couldn't you? 
Yeah, Alan won't be very impressed, I don't think. Okay, so I'm going to twizzle this round now so I can get to the screw at the back. Pop the other one in. The rubbers don't seem too bad, actually. So I'll thread that through there. Dum, 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 dum. Now this is where you need about nine hands. Now, why don't we just chuck some silicon on that, on these rubbers, so we can twizzle it around a bit easier later on. I'll do that. I'll grab, I'll grab some silicon. Hang on. Silicon spray. That'll do for that one. Right, let's pop that one back out again, just for a second. Done. Okay, that one's in. And about straight. That one's in. And about straight. So now we've got to compress both of those and get the screw in there. Holy crap. That's not going to be easy at all. At all, he says. Right, let's give the threads a bit of a clean. Now this, this one does look original. It hasn't been shortened. Or maybe you just ordered three longer ones and cut two of them down, I don't know. I don't know, I wasn't there. It could be years ago. I do like these little brass wire brushes, they're brilliant. Okay, thread lock. Thanks, Jared. Cool, okay. Let's get rid of that. Don't need that again for a while. Ooh. Right, this is going to be immense amounts of fun, and I don't think it's going to happen the first time around. Wow. Need more hands. Hang on. I know what we'll do. We'll use the stomach. Can you still see? You can. God damn, that's going to be fun. <laughs> no, no. Oh, hang on, don't do that rubber. Right, they have got little indents on them. God knows where they go. That one seems to want to be really happy there, but this one hasn't got that. Unless that's it there, hang on. God. Bear with me people, it's a learning process. So we've got like an indent there. That was in the wrong place by the looks of it. So I think it needs twizzling round. If it will. It should do. Yeah, you see there's like an indent under there. And there's no indent. Ah, there look, you see. There's an indent in the clock. And that's where that should go. That's not going to help, is it, if it's in the wrong place? Right, so he looks, he's happy. Is this one happy? No, it's not. It's in the wrong place again. I don't think I twizzled it around. All right, so where is it? There. Okay, that's probably going to help quite a bit. But it has got, yeah, it's got a bit there, look. Which sort of, I would expect that to be on a part, you know, where the join is, or maybe down there. I'm going to read the service manual. Back in a second. I'm back. There's nothing in the manual to tell you, but I've worked it out. I'll pull this one off. You see on the outside, we've got a little lug, in, you know, embedded in the, or proud in the actual plastic, no, the rubber. And on the inside, there's also another little lug. So I'm going to take it off completely. And if you look around the actual clock itself, we've got a recess here and another one there and under this rubber there is also another little lump and that one goes in there and that one goes in there obviously it's easy to get it mixed up which is exactly what I did 
and I think one of them was on the wrong way around anyway. And the external lump here should be, you know, about seven o'clock because it lines up by the looks of it with this gap here on the actual bracket. So the speedo one will do the same, it'll line up with that. And then we're all good. That's the plan. So let's stick them back in. I'm not saying it's gonna be any easier to get the whole thing back together, but hopefully it will be. Right, we'll sit in there, look. And I was right, speedo on the left, rev counter on the right, which is pretty standard for motorcycles. Would annoy the crap out of Alan if put the wrong way around, wouldn't it? Right, where is the lug? There's the lug on that one. And of course, this one's now decided to escape. Come on, mate, you need to be in there. Who would have thought? Right, that's lined up. And now, <laughs> God, I need to get a bolt through. That, 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 that looks better, actually. I'm just going to twizzle it round because we need to use the stomach. Very useful this stomach actually for doing stuff. Okay, still a little bit of thread lock on it. Right, final adjustment. Right, I think we're there. We're there. Okay, so we're going in. Jeez, this is not going to be easy or pretty. A little cap head would have been easier to be honest. Jeez, that was not easy. Right, so have a final check. Do they look level? You tell me, because now is the time to. Yeah, they look, they look pretty level to me. Maybe a fraction on that one. Looks pretty good. Happy with that. Happy with that. So we've got a bit of a gap going on down there, though. In the rubber. So what's happening there? Right. I think these rubbers are quite old and stretched. It needs to sit flat. That's better. Okay, let's do that. Don't want to have to redo these again. Don't bear the screw, Mr. Young. Don't bear the screw. I reckon that'll do. Hoo -hoo! One more step closer to the end. Mrs. Mechanic's going to go mental. I said, I'll be an hour in the workshop. I'll be back in the house. Don't you panic. Three hours later. I spent over an hour logging the torque settings. Totally unproductive. Okay, all that's left to do now before it goes back on the bike is fit the bolts. So we'll do that on the bench. Less chance of losing washers, and then we can drop the whole assembly back on the bike and start bolting it up. <laughs> right, said Fred. Let's do the big one first. Pretty easy. No idea which side the nut was supposed to go on, but it's going in that way. Now, these ones, itchy nose. Don't forget we've got that little spacer washer that has to be put in the right place, which is the one with bits ground out of it, which I think is, I reckon it's just a, that's a standard washer that somebody's mutilated by the looks of it. So that's gonna have to go in, must go in that way because it won't fit the other way and it came out with the clocks in situ. So we'll back that off. We'll pop that in there. Absolutely critical now that bit. And then we've got three washers to go on the end. Not easy to camera. Right. How was that? That'll do, won't it? Okay, same on the other side.
Look at our super special washers are going in the gap. Yes, definitely being played around with because this one's got basically the, the, the cutaways almost opposite, whereas that one had them at 90 degrees to each other. So these are homemade for sure. So are they the right thickness? I don't know. I will be checking that out before we tighten them up. Because, you know, I can always, if I have to, I'll even machine some up on the lathe at the right thickness. Because the last thing I want to do is even possibly jeopardise this one starting to crack. I'm uh, a bit concerned about it. Okay, okay. Now, don't forget, clutch cable through the gap in the middle. Let's get through lots of other stuff. I should be able to wiggle that on there. Probably a bit of paint in the way. He says. Don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it. I think there's some paint in the way. Oh. I think we're going to need to clean that paint out. Damn. Back to the bench. I've got to be quick. My battery's going flat and my vernier's. So, internal diameter of this one, as it stands, near as damn it, 23.96. Right, where's the, where's the original one? Original one, I know it's, a bit, it's, it's not ideal, is it, really? 24.2425. So, is it splayed more, or is it the paint? Well, that one hasn't got any paint in it. And this one has got lots of paint in it. So I'm going to have to just, I think, just get rid of that paint. That paint shouldn't be there. It's causing a problem. I don't want to force the thing on. This will do. A bit wet and dry. We don't need to go mad. I just, just want to get rid of the, the excess. I can't put it in the vise either. Right. Camera time. There we go. That works, doesn't it? Oh, there's insulation tape hanging off all over the place. Right, how the hell are we going to do this? So you can see what's going on. There we are, look, that'll work. So it's super fine, wet and dry, that's all it is. I'll take the edge off, try and get rid of some of that thickness of paint that's in there. They've done really well, they've masked most of it off, but this bit didn't get masked off. How's that looking? It's a bit longer yet, Mr. Young, a bit longer yet. It's nice to get back onto the bike, actually. It's been stood around for the last few months, waiting for the last parts to arrive. Then they arrived, then I got really busy doing ROVs, servicing them and undersigning them and things. And now we have a little bit of time. So I'm not rushing. It gets done when it gets done, but it's nice to have a bit more time. Is that going to make a difference? There is still some paint in there. Don't know. Let's go and find out. Right. Second time lucky. That's not Marmite barking, by the way. She's pretty good. She doesn't bark like that. Okay, we are nearly there. There we go. Okay, okay let's get our big nut slapped on. Hopefully, there's enough threads to make it start. There is. There we go. Look. So that'll just draw it down. I wonder what size threads it is. What size uh, nut that is. Because we've still got a few mil to go. Oh, there we go. Look, that's better. Okay, so what's next? Where do we go from here? Well, I'll tell you. We've got the <laughs> the headlight mounts to fit, and basically, I've got to fit those first to get the forks in. Plus, of course, we need the forks in to align the top and the bottom clamps anyway. So, we get to fit a nice shiny, or two shiny pieces, freshly painted, uh, to the bike with some rubbers, which were upside down the last time. 
uh, not me, the previous owner, previous person took it apart. So um, hopefully we'll get them right this time around. Let me go and find all the bits. Ah, there you are. Right, these are the old rubbers that came out. And as you can see, incredibly perished to the point where it's just going to snap into pieces. Sorry, Alan, if it does, but it's rubbish. It's going to go in the bin anyway. It doesn't really matter. They are completely junk. And they were the wrong way up. I've got to remember which way around they were now. I think these are the top ones. Are these, again, the old ones? These aren't in too bad a nick, but we've got new ones. So the top ones, hopefully I've got this right now, which are these. They've got the little indents inside and stuff. Those are for the top. The part number for those is that made in Japan and you'll need two of those which we have two here's the other one he says hopefully it's right they haven't opened it before yeah we are look that's the other one same part number two of those cool more bags out of the drawer the drawer's getting pretty empty now actually and the other two which are now the bottom ones when they're in the correct position that is the part number for those and when i ordered these i was told there was one left in the world one and uh, bonnie up at kai tai motorcycles managed i don't know how she did it to get me two so obviously she'd gone to a different planet where these bikes are sold as well and managed to get me an extra one from there well done bonnie really appreciate it pints the next pints on me okay so what do the new ones look like hopefully they're correct <laughs> otherwise a bit of a waste of time so that's the old one all perished up as you can see and this is the nice new one uh, no signs of perishing it's actually a pretty basic kind of rubber isn't it really so we've got one there and last one i do like emptying the parts drawer because i've got so many projects on the go on the go at the moment there's parts everywhere right that's the other one so we've got both those now the actual headlight brackets themselves they got painted look at that super shiny and one of them was really badly damaged i don't know what had happened along the back they're supposed to have this little groove this sort of indent in the back uh, one of them was completely shot can you tell now which one's been repaired and which one was the original honestly the guy that did this was an absolute genius when it comes to, to you know working with metal and getting the shapes just right if you look on the previous videos you'll see one of them had loads of marks it was all twisted up at the back and he's made it look like absolutely brand new yes we could have gone out and just bought some new ones you can get these but they wouldn't have been the original ones these are the ones it came out of the factory with so i believe that stands for something doesn't it all i have to do now is not drop these on the floor as i'm assembling the front end so these rubbers just sit i believe this is the first time i've done this in the top like that before they were sort of wedged inside in here and it was all but it was just wrong basically now the other ones these ones not too sure how these go whether they sort of cone up the inside like that i know there's a, a rubber gaiter that clips geez that clips <laughs> as long as it was this that i dropped uh it clips into this groove here so i can't really imagine how else it could go but i will be looking at the manual uh, to see what's going on there's no point in looking at the previous video footage because it was in the wrong place this one was wedged inside there which was incorrect and this one was sort of, I don't know, sat on top somehow. I should have said the old perished one was. It was all it was all wrong. It was just flopping around. It wasn't really well positioned was the headlight. It could be moved around a bit. And again, that's a warrant fairly. It has to, a headlight has to be able to maintain position because you've got the beam pattern and the uh, the angle of the beam to to be a specific amount. You know, you can't, uh, you can't have your headlights flapping around. Okay, I'm going to go and do a bit more research, work out where bits go. Probably a parts diagram. That's probably the best way forward. Yes, I know where one of those is. Let's go. I'll go and find the parts diagram and then I'll show you. Now, this is a really useful website. It's called CMS. 
Uh, their website address is cmsnl.com. And you can, there's all sorts of different, you know, different brands and stuff. Uh, I don't want to lose the page, so this is what we've got here. So all the basically all the parts. And looking at these, just jump around a bit, sorry. We've got the top rubbers here, part 11. Uh, and they go in that orientation. And then I was wrong, the bottom ones, actually the cone is downwards. So it just sits without dropping it it just sits in there like that which is a bit weird so we're going to find out how that's going to work i have no idea at the moment don't drop it andy so yeah there you go that's how it should look when we're finished it did seem very precarious when i took it apart right i'm all on my own i've only got two hands uh, i think this job might require more than two hands Anyway, we'll see. So that's supposed to sit on there, and that sits in there like that. Okay, fair enough. That seems to be okay, acceptable. And that top bracket just needs twizzling around a bit more. There we go. Now, next problem is. If you can see this, hopefully you can. Only just this rubber has to go on there like that, according to the parts manual. And I've got to feed the fork in without dropping anything. Bit of a problem. So I'm going to stop the camera and I'm going to put a safety zip tie through this hole and up around the clock somewhere, just so that if this does drop, it's going to get caught, you know, and hang rather than hit the ground because these were not cheap to get painted up, believe me. Where are they, Alan? Oh, there we go, jeez. <laughs> I've zip-tied it to the wire off the speedo. Hopefully the wire won't pull out if it drops. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll slide that down the fork itself, which is where it seems to want to go. And then we're going to offer the fork up through the bottom clamp. Now it does say there's a special tool for this in the workshop manual, but um, I really can't understand why. Okay, through there, and we're still a bit off. Don't jump out of there, mister. There we go, right, now. Yeah. Got to rotate that wash around so there's clearance. Right, so I'm going to do up the bolt just to hold everything for a second so I can get my bearings without scratching the paint. And it's not the standard bolt that I'm doing up either. Right, that should hold everything in place. So, if I remember rightly, it was a very strange setup, to be honest. Very strange indeed, because this, this seemed to be holding the, the gator in place. See if that, that's just gonna drop down. very confused it is very misleading to be honest because on the parts diagram it shows this rubber distinctly below the height of what they call the ears which are the brackets that hold the headlight in reality bear with me I found a forum which is extremely helpful thank you very much gentlemen you can see here the this rubber here's one I prepared earlier this rubber goes in that orientation with the cone upwards inside the ear. If we go back to the parts diagram, it shows the rubber with the cone downwards. Somebody's wrong. Either the parts diagram's wrong, or 
these guys are wrong. But I have tried it and it seems to fit a lot better that way. And there is a slight taper inside that lip, inside the ear, for this taper here to locate, this cone to locate onto. So it all makes sense. So we're going to do that. Just goes to show that you can spend an awful lot of time doing research, trying to find stuff out. I must have spent probably today in total two and a half hours doing research, whether it's torque settings or whether it's how these ears actually, these headlight mounts actually properly fit to the bike. It's not that I didn't take notice when I took it apart. When I took it apart, it was all completely wrong. They had this one at the bottom and this one at the top, and it was just all over the place. So I knew I was going to be in for a bit of a fight with this one, and that's why research really, really helps. And whoever did that, um, did that forum, who put that post in there? Guy called Johnny. He says it's the really old timer. He posted that on April the 29th, 2010, at 6:53 p.m. And here we are in 2021, benefiting from that post. What a bloke! That's that's what the internet's all about: sharing the knowledge. Okay, let's head off to the bike. Give it a go. He says, "Arm yourself with a can of silicon." So we've got that. That's going to help the fork to pass up inside that rubber when we slide it up. Hopefully. Here we go. Okay. It could all go tragically wrong. Doesn't matter as long as this bit doesn't land on the ground. If it does, then, well, even though it's locked down, I'm off to the pub. Okay. So this piece here goes inside the ear, they call it, and it pushes up there and hides out of sight and obviously it's there to mount for the ear you know grips the fork it doesn't flap around and also to take the vibration out of the headlight because otherwise you're gonna be blowing bulbs all the time okay now we need some silicon spray on that rubber there we go and now I believe all goes to plan we'll stick some silicon inside the top of that one as well because that was most definitely catching on the fork earlier. And now that can go back over the bottom clamp. In fact, let's just bang a bit of silicon on top of the clamp. A bit more on there. And then we can ease that over. <laughs> he says. There we go. Get my finger up inside and make sure that, that that rubber stays in place. Perfect. There we go. Okay, that's working. So far, so good. Okay, next job is to feed the fork in. So again, I'll stick a bit of silicon on the fork stanchion. That should help. You can't get, have enough lube with this kind of a job. And we'll get that in there. Oh, beautiful, look at that. See, a knowledge is an amazing thing, isn't it? I'm not saying I know everything, I don't. That's why we that's why we go on the old internet. Right. Need to go a bit further up. Okay. Right, I'm gonna lock that off for now. We're sort of high enough up to do the rest of it for now. Don't scratch the paint, Andy. Don't scratch the paint, Andy. Don't scratch the paint, Andy. Right, I'm just nipping that up for now, so I've got time to stop. The fork still needs to go up. And about another 15 mil. It's just to stay in that top clamp. Okay, this that's pretty good, actually. I like that. Okay, so the next problem is going to be fitting this ring. Now, I, do, I read in the internet in the internet, it's not on the internet, in the internet, that this ring is responsible for holding this gator in place. So the question is, do we put that up the top like that, which is, means it's, it's gonna be in the way, because we've got to get this gator into that groove, or, geez, it's not easy, is it? Honestly, who designed this? Who thought this was a good idea? Right, let's try and just force the gaze through there a bit for now. I know it looks weird and I could be completely wrong. And then we can get the gator 
into that groove. Now obviously we're stretching the gator a bit because the fork's not all the way in. But that's all right, it's a bellows. It should extend that far without any problems. And everybody said that these are a bit of a fight. So I've prepared myself. There we go, right. So that's where that should sit. And now, get some more silicon on the job. We said copious amounts of silicon can only be a good thing. This then slides up over that top bellow. And again, it was really weird taking this whole thing apart, I must admit. In all honesty, you'd almost want to fit the bellow with the. Yeah, almost. You could actually fit the bellow on the bench with that and then slide the fork up through the bellow and up through this i reckon that's how they do it in the factory god we're getting close to that paint i don't like that you know what i'm going to take it back off and i'm going to remove the bellow from the bottom which is easy enough and i'm going to fit the bellow to that on the bench Right, said Fred, this is exactly how it came straight off the bike. So I just want to whip that off again for now. I need to get me, I need to retrieve my ring. There we go. Man, honestly, it's not easy. Okay, so that should eventually end up in that position there. And the idea is that it puts pressure on this bit. So it should sit, basically, as I understand it. Man, I shouldn't go that way. No, it has to go. It has to go groove upwards. It has to go groove upwards. And I've been told that these. That it's a funny kind of design. It's not what we normally see. Surely it's not on there. Maybe it is. It's just got a tiny little recess there. Maybe it provides just enough to keep it tucked in, like that. Look, it looks right like that, doesn't it? Okay. Let's give that a go. So we'll slide that up there like that. So that won't go any further, will it? Isn't that weird? So that's going to sit on there, which is going to be right at the top over there. Now that has to be like there, like that. Okay, silicon, we need silicon. So that's a fair chunk. I wonder if these are aftermarket gators, they probably are, and they're quite deep. Chicken and egg, isn't it? I don't want to scratch the paint, but I also know that this has to be further up. I think we're just trying to do the best we can. That's where that sits. There, look, see? Look! Chipped paint already. It's not easy. <laughs> if it was easy, we'd all do it. Right, let's try and get this back on, then we can see if we can try and massage that around to where it needs to be. But I think that's where it sits. It just sits right on the end of, that, of the gator. This isn't going to work, is it? I'd like to meet the guy that designed this, and I'd also like to see somebody in the factory that puts it together. I think doing it on the bench is a far better idea than trying to do it on the on the bike though. I hope you can still see what's going on because you know what? I'm not going to I have to do it twice, don't I? Nah, man, this is just a nightmare. So that should fit on there like that. There. Perfect. 
That's easy. Now, this bit is supposed to fit in that orientation just there. So the only way of doing that is, well, there's two ways. One is we have it on the gator and then we try and we try and slide it over this bit, but it won't go over that because the diameter is too big. Or the alternative is to have it further up. Which it doesn't want to do because well, it's not big enough, is it? Or we just keep it there and try and tuck the whole thing on. Use the belly again, how's that? See if that's gonna work. Okay, so that's, I think that's it. I think that's as good as you get. To be perfectly honest. Okay, well, let's go and put it back on the bike. See if that's gonna work. I'm feeling more confident now. I think we might have broken its back. This is always a bit tight getting on here, though. Oh, rubber, hang on. There we go, okay. Right, I think we're in position. I will still put a cable tie on, though, because I'm absolutely paranoid about damaging this paint for Alan, because it's, it's already got a couple of little marks on it. Not that you'll ever see them, because they're all hidden, but... You know, we don't want any more. There we go. Right. So all you need to do is slide up the fork. Easier said than done. Okay. We're going in. Mr. Robert, stay put. There we go. Okay. Okay, so he's where he, he needs to be. Can we get it through a bit further? That'll do for now. Where's my spanner? Right, let's go lock that off just to hold everything in place for a bit. While we get, just regroup, have a rethink how we're gonna get that fork a bit further. Normally, I would just put a flat screwdriver in the gap and splay it slightly. Very, very against doing that because of the problems that we've had before. Once the fork's in position, then I'll, I'll reattach the bottom of the gator. But yes, we've still got a bit further to go. So yes, we've still got a little bit further to go through the uh, triple clamp. Remember, this isn't bolted up yet. This is still loose. So really, it's just for alignment purposes, but it does need to go further up. But we also need to bolt that down. Where are we? There, look. Getting close, though. It's looking a lot better, isn't it? It's looking blue again, rather than just frame. We need a plan of attack. Plan of attack is, let's get the other fork put in, in exactly the same way to this, this point. Holy moly. How did we do this last time? Yes, that's right. So we need, let's put that in first, it's done. So he goes in there, and that's quite tight inside there. Excellent, we'll get some silicon spray on there now while we can. Cool, it's pretty seated at that. Oh, I didn't do that by the way, that it came like that. It wasn't me. And the top one, that just clips in there, it's probably gonna fall out, so we'll clip it in for now anyway. Got a silicon spray. It does make a huge difference actually, it really, really, really does. 
brass brushes, especially the small ones like this, are really good for cleaning up rubbers and things. Just getting the dirt off without damaging the rubber. Wouldn't dream of using a steel wire brush on here, but this is great. We've got a silicon spray. I'm trying to be professional now. Got a silicon spray. Don't drop it on the drop it on the floor. Left-handed spraying. How's that? Okay. Now that has to go on there like that. Remember rightly, we use my stomach for the additional hand, which you need three hands to do this, by the way. Or well, most humans will. Come on, Mr. Collar, get back up there again. Thank you. Okay. It all happens real quick when it works. I did last time. It just sort of fell into place, didn't it? you can do it second one of something that you do I always find is always the hardest and the third one becomes easier again is that is that it I think that's it that's all you get with these things that's as good as it gets people right it's on more silicon there's lots of silicon I like silicon. Silicon's good. Okay, it's getting a bit late now. This is mechanics going to get really grumpy shortly because she'll run out of cigarettes. Okay, let's give that a bit of a clean. And a suggestion: just make sure that it's, there's no rough edges on top of here, because otherwise the rubber's going to struggle to get over it. But I reckon some more silicon. Honestly, you just can't. And with this job, you just can't have enough silicon on the stuff. Right. We're going in. There we go, slide it on. Perfect. Okay, right, in position, there we go, nice and loose. Now, fork, where's Mr. Fork gone? He's around there somewhere. Hopefully, I've not positioned the camera in uh, the tripod, should I say, in the wrong place. Okay, we're going in again. Oh, we're close to the tripod. If I'm not the camera, my apologies. Oh, that was pretty close. Okay. Ah, now that one is almost through. Right, let's just nip that off so it doesn't go anywhere. There we go. Coolio. No wonder I couldn't get the fork up. Look, the little washer's rotated round and it's actually catching on the top of the fork. So hopefully I can remove that. I'm have to slacken that fork off again actually. I think I will. Bear with me people. Honestly there's so many little things that can catch you out on this thing. There we go. Right. So let's just see now. We can rotate Mr. Washer around. Bit of a Heath Robinson setup really isn't it? There. I need a little pokey stick. I had a screwdriver a second ago. What do I do with it? That'll do. I'll use this one. Look, much easier. I think that's out of the way now. Or is it? I think so. Bit hard to see actually. Oh, there she comes. 
God, so close. You know, I'm so tempted to take that bolt out completely and fit the washer afterwards. Well, hang on. It's like one of those Jenga games, isn't it? Right, that's safe. Let's get this taken completely out because it's just causing problems at the moment. Ah. Oh, hang on. Magnet time, magnet time, don't panic. Incoming, incoming. Got him. Let's have another go. So top tip, don't put these bolts in, especially with those stupid washers in place, until later. Because they'll, they'll just cause you problems. Oh, she's coming up now. There we are, look. Right, so I'm just going to do it flush. Which it is. I like that. Or should we do it flush to the top of the tube? I think flush to the top of the tube is better. Give it slightly more of a racing stance. A fraction more. <clears throat> Screwdriver to the rescue. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's pretty good actually. That works. This side is done. It's in position. Let's do up the uh, the bottom pinch belt again. A little bit. I'm not talking them up. I'm just doing them up a little bit. There we go. Right, to the side. So what did you do today? Well, I actually fitted two brackets for the headlights. Oh, the triple clamp. And stripped a few bits off. Well done. Very productive. Okay, let's get rid of that. Stupid little spacer. Yeah. I'm going to find out what the size is for that spacer. I can't order any, even though that you can get them. I can't order any because it will take too long. And we don't have time. Where's my spanner gone now? There he is. Time getting me tired now. It was an early start to edit videos for you guys this morning. Right, now we should be able to go all the way up. Oh, look at that. Honestly. All right, quick check. Yeah, oh no, that's wrong, isn't it? Because we're doing top of the tube, not top of the nut. There we go. Ah, done. Right, said Fred. Last bit, well, second to last bit to do for today, then we're nearly finished, is just to pop these, god damn, pop one of these uh, these bolts back through with the stupid washers, which should never have to be exist anywhere in the world, in this particular location. See, look, it doesn't want to go in. I'm just not happy with that at all. I think that's pants. Look, it's rubbish. Nope, we're going to fix that tomorrow. I'll leave that bolt out just to prevent me from tightening up without a washer in place. But that's crap. That's not how it should be. They, what, the washers are wrong. I can stay on the bench. I can stay down there. One last thing to do, seems we can't do those, and that's to, just to stug down the triple clamp with the big nut. Not to talk it up, we'll just snug it down for now. Shouldn't have too far to go now. Well, I would say 
That'll do. Bloody good job. Okay, okay, I'll show you the camera sort of mount configuration for that, that last shot that we did. Yes, I've already put a bolt in there, look. Bit of old scrap steel, <laughs> pair of mole grips, bit of thick steel, a DTI clamp, which I've modified to take a camera mount. This is the best thing I've ever done. If you make videos for YouTube and you do stuff like me, that kind of clamp is just brilliant. Obviously with automotive, we're using steel stuff all the time, so you know, it works. It's incredible. I use it all the time, on the bench, on the bike, on a car. It's probably 90% of the shots are taken using that little clamp. Well, we solved the mystery of how to fit the ears, the headlight brackets, on a CB750K2. Not an easy mystery to solve, and there were many variables, and we had to go online and look at stuff, and go onto forums, look at parts diagrams. It was a bit ambiguous, but we worked it out in the end. It's been a funny kind of an afternoon. I, I've, I've taken more parts off the bike than I've put back on, but that seems to be the case most days at the moment. Um, all I can say is thanks for joining me, um, keeping me company for the afternoon. I've got lots more stuff to do on this bike, and we'll just carry on tomorrow. See you then. Cheers. Oh, we haven't done the credits. Hang on. I can't do that. Um, so, if you enjoyed the video, <laughs> I got carried away. If you enjoyed the video, why not click on the subscribe button? That way, uh, I'll ring the bell, don't forget, and that way you won't miss out on any future videos. There's already loads of videos uh, on this CB750 on the channel, plus about 550 other videos fixing other stuff. So there's lots of content to go at if you've just found the channel. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. Although, to be fair, I don't really use Twitter anymore. I might have to delete that one. Anyway, uh, otherwise, you can send me an email, and my email address is down the bottom in the description. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you found it entertaining, informative, helpful, educational, whatever, and you'd like to support the channel, then you can do that in two different, well, you can do that in many different ways, but if you want to send some money across, you can do that through Patreon and become a patron, uh, and there's a link on the homepage, or you can do a one-off donation through PayPal, and again, it's the same email address. Any donations that come in are gratefully received, and they go towards paying for making videos like this. Okay, crew, well, I'm going to get packed up. Mrs. Mechanic's going mental. It's definitely tea time now. Got me hands to wash. It'll take me half an hour to pack up. Uh, I'll see you back in the workshop tomorrow. Cheers. Over and out. And we get the up again. Oh. Okay. <laughs>